with some social activity, but an easy one. Everybody in the room shakes hands with his or her neighbor. Please. Well, you're doing great. Now, more difficult. Everybody in the room shakes hands with his other neighbor or her other neighbor. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. I hope you realize that you just exchanged 5,000 hand bacteria <laughs> with your right side neighbor plus 5,000 hand bacteria with your left side neighbor. Like that. Formidable. <laughs> plus, in addition to that, everybody in the room, including myself, has picked their nose this morning before coming. Hence, we just exchange our nose microbiome like that. I say we because I shook hands with some when I just came. We're all on the same boat. But don't worry. This is all okay. It will be fine. This is compulsive natural primate behavior. <laughs> we pick nose. It is even healthy. Because what we just did is exchange bacterial biodiversity. And bacterial biodiversity teaches or educates our immune system. And an educated immune system protects us from infection, but also from allergy and from asthma. Children raised in farms with many animals share bacteria with animals and they are less prone to allergy and asthma than urban children. So bacterial biodiversity is important to us. It is part of us. In addition to that, by tonight, this bacteria we just exchanged will have divided up to 10 times. <laughs> because they are living organisms, and living organisms replicate. Replication is the driving power of life. Replication is when a single cell divides and divides and divides and gives rise to a population. Sometimes you have a mutant, which divides and divides and divides and gives rise to a new population. So we do. We replicate all the time. It is just more complicated, but we do this. Now, in order to replicate, we need to manage energy, sun energy, chemical energy. Life transforms matter. Life can use sun to transform carbon dioxide plus water into sugar, glucose, proteins, DNA, larger molecules. Then it can burn back glucose into carbon dioxide and water in order to retrieve the energy stored in it to transform matter further. Plant and microbes use glucose to build their cell wall, their trunk, their leaves, right? We build our body. We even use odd elements like iron to transport oxygen or even cobalt to make new amino acids or proteins, whatever. This is an amazing machinery to, to replicate and improve. But why replicate and improve? Why improve? Well, improve to replicate better. Then why replicate better? To expand, to to invade the world, the universe, a kind of a biological Big Bang, but a controlled Big Bang. At each level of this formidable evolution of life, we went through steps of augmentation. Augmentation. Augmentation is when you get a, coo a tool that enhances your ability to do something. Easy. This primate has found a stick with which he can punch beehives, get the honey out of it, lick it without being stinged, as if he were to go with the sand. Our iPhones are augmentation tools for communication, movie watching, whatever. This is augmentation. The first cells 
four billion years ago were augmented when they learned how to capture the sun energy and transform matter. These similar cells, very simple, were augmented when they fused together to give more subtle, more sophisticated cells called eukaryotes, which we are made of. Small viruses like influenza virus, the virus that gets you the flu, cannot replicate alone was augmented when he found the trick to invade our cell and take over our replication machinery in order to replicate himself. Of course, we are sick. We got augmented when we learned how to master certain viruses to our advantage. One example, as we just shook hands, we exchanged our nose microbiome. Staphylococcus aureus, a bacterium, is a common inhabitant of our nose. Staphylococcus aureus is present in up to one-third of the population's nose. One, two, three, healthy staphylococcal carrier. One, two, three, healthy staphylococcal carrier. Imagine we just shook hands. <laughs> Don't worry, non-carrier will not keep it. But Staphylococcus aureus found it was very convenient to inhabit the nose because it's a good way to disperse, because we shake hands after having picked nose. Smart. This is augmentation. Now, Staphylococcus aureus, unfortunately, sometimes is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He can sometimes infect us. No, why do we care? We have antibiotics. Well, antibiotics are made by fungi and, uh, and yeast in, the, in nature as a self-defense against microbial or bacterial aggression. So in green, the yeast, in yellow, the staphylococcus. The yeast produce antibiotics that surround them and diffuse around them. If the bacterium approach, it will be killed. This is the very first experiment of Alexander Fleming when he discovered penicillin in 1928. It is so simple, and it changed the evolution of humanity. Well, the fact that yeast and molds can produce antibiotics to defend themselves is called primary augmentation, because they do it directly. Now, we have learned how to grow these organisms in batches and ask them to manufacture the antibiotics for ourselves. This is secondary augmentation. Okay, now, of course, Staphylococcus aureus find, found the trick to become resistant to antibiotics. This is, again, augmentation on his side. But for us, of course, you realize this means war. How can we turn this around? Well, one way would be to use bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are tiny viruses in the nanoscale that can infect bacteria and kill them. Here's one. Beautiful nanorobots. This is magnified 40,000 times, 40,000 times. It has legs to grasp its prey. It has a shaft to punch the prey, to sting and punch the prey. And it has this ampulla full of its DNA that will in be injected in the bacterium. Here is a cartoon view of it. You can see that there are legs, that there is a shaft, then there is the ampulla, and there is the red DNA. It floats around, it finds the bacterium, it sticks to it, it punches it, it ejects its DNA. The DNA will replicate using the bacterial machinery and then it make it explode. Simple, self-replicating, self-sustainable, self-controlled. When there are no more bacteria, it stops and waits. That's it. Now, this nanorobot, this high-tech nanorobot was invented four billion years ago, not by man, by nature, by replication. It's a replication tool. Four billion years ago, we are full of them. They are everywhere. We have more of these things than our own bacteria and our old cells. 
they are totally inoffensive to us. They only deal with bacteria. They control our microbiome. And now we can teach them to attack and kill antibiotic-resistant bacteria as an alternative to antibiotics. Now we are augmented by these viruses. So life evolved by iterative steps of augmentation. Life invented everything, including the human brain. Now, the human brain, in turn, invented human augmentation tools, like uh, emotion, like violin or instrument to enhance emotion, like construction and deconstruction, like also total destruction. We even now invented information technology. You heard of that. You in invented internet, GAFA, artificial intelligence, iPhones. For a better life, for a better society, we better take advantage of that. We think of that. Because these, you realize, these augmentation tools, man-made augmentations, are not self-replicating, not self-sustainable, and sometimes not well controlled. Right? As we are discussing today, together right now, my brain, your brain, is burning something like the equivalent of two light bulbs of energy. Internet, the GAFA, behind our iPhones, is burning up to eight nuclear power plants of energy right now. Very soon, 5% of the total energy consumption of the world not sustainable, not self-replicating, and maybe not controlled. We better take advantage of them. If we do not, they may destroy us as well. It would not be the first time that in the history of humankind that we turn the gun back against ourselves. We should have learned from that. It's all in our power to do that. Right? It could destroy us, it will not destroy life. Don't worry about that. Cockroaches, cockroaches can live happily and have families in nuclear power plants, no problem. Scorpions can survive up to one to two years without eating anything, just waiting for the next prey. Tuberculosis bacilli in our lungs can survive up to 100 years before being passed to somebody else. This is really solid. We can switch off human-made augmentation uh, tools. We cannot switch off replication of life. We cannot switch off replication of life. This is the power of life. Thank you. <laughs>